Hello there guys, welcome to today's Easy Tutorials. This video is for Excel 2010, the main interface. Now, when you look at the actual interface itself, the first thing that I want to bring to your attention is over here. Notice we've got the sizing icons, we've got the minimize, the maximize and the close. This is for the application window. These three little fellas here are exactly the same. Minimize, maximize, restore, and close. These are for the workbook. Now you've got there look book one, Microsoft Excel. When I click on this little fella, notice now you've got a workbook window and you've got an application window. Now what you've got to understand about Excel is this window can never leave the application window. You have to have the application window and have these workbooks within. You can have as many workbooks as you like within the Excel window, it's not a problem. Notice I've just opened another one here, so now I've got book one and book two. I, uh, I can have as many as I like open. So why we're telling you this is that it's, it's very important to understand that when you're working in Excel you have got a workbook within the application and you can open another workbook without opening another version of Excel. I'm just going to maximize this window. So the top set is for the application meaning Excel itself. That's Excel. And then you've got the the this one which is the workbook which is the actual workbook within the book. Over here you've got the quick access toolbar. Now what the quick access toolbar is, this is so you can put command that you most commonly use on this toolbar so they're available all the time. Now to put a button onto this quick access toolbar you just click on this little button here, customize quick access toolbar, you drop it down and you say quick print. Now I always use quick print so I'll put a little quick print in. Notice now we've got the quick print button in there and that you can have as many buttons along here as you wish. Now you can put anything you want on there, any command you want. Um, you just go to a button and you just literally right click and you say add to quick access toolbar and that will add it to the access toolbar. To remove a button from the quick access toolbar you just literally right click on it, remove from quick access toolbar and it will remove the buttons from you. So it's really easy to customize but it is really good also. Then I want you to have a look at this little area here and this is the ribbon. Now this area here this button hides the ribbon. Now notice now all you can see is the ribbon tabs and these are the ribbon tabs. File, Home, Insert, Page, Layout, Formulas, Data Review and View. And I can still access the ribbon by just clicking on one of these and it'll appear up there and then click it again and it disappears. Um, so when you've got it hidden uh, you, when you've got the ribbon hidden you can still get to it. I can also use Control F1 on the keyboard and that will also display and hide the ribbon also. Now the ribbon replaces all the menus, toolbars and task panes that you had in 2003 and previous versions to that. The ribbon was introduced in 2007 but the ribbon is a very good way of working. It's, it's quite efficient once you get used to it. Now the way it works is it consists of tabs which I've already explained to you and each tab has got groups of commands that relate to a certain topic. Notice the home tab consists of the clipboard which is paste, cut, copy, format painter. You've got the font which controls all the fonts, the font face, the font size, larger and smaller, um, background shading, bold, italic, underline. This one is your alignment, so you can play with all your alignment uh, in your cells and wrap your text. This one's the number, this is all your number formats, decreasing zeros and increasing zeros, things like that. These are your styles and you've got conditional formatting and 
format as a table things like that then you've got the cells so you can insert delete and format the cells you've got the editing which is the auto some functions the uh, fill series and the clear sort and find then you go over here to the formulas for instance these are all your different formulas that you can work with your page layout and you can control all the page layout this is so so powerful it is untrue now it works so you can find a command in simply two clicks and literally if I just imagine I want to insert a picture or I want to insert a chart into Excel I would just go to the insert menu I will go to the chart I want let's say a pie chart for instance and I would just click the pie chart that I want and literally there's your pie chart in two clicks tab command notice when you have certain objects in your document you also get extra tabs on the ribbon now these tabs are what we call contextual tabs and notice here the chart tools I've got the design tab for all the different designs of my charts I've got the layout of all my charts and I can format all my charts so these contextual tabs will only pop up when you're in certain items like pictures and charts and things like that but they are called contextual tabs they only pop up when needed notice now I've got rid of the chart they've disappeared we don't need them so that's all your ribbon and everything else now this little buttons for the help so you can get help on Excel you can get anything that you want this is really good in the sense that it'll go up on the internet as well and it'll search on the internet for you as well all I would say to you is when you're searching for help just imagine that you're asking a person and type in what you would ask that person it uses a language called IntelliSense and it picks keywords out and it'll go and get you the the best answer on the keywords that's working on very very good then you've got the three sizing icons for the workbook don't remember these are the, don't forget these are for the workbook and these are for the application window okay then you come down here and you come down to this area now this area of the Excel workbook is so important it's called the formula bar now the formula bar consists of three areas this area is the name box now the name box tells you the position of that little box here and this little box here is referred to as the cell pointer now the cell pointer is always lands on a grid reference like on here we're on column B row 5 so the cell address that we landed on is B5 and it tells you that in the name box so you've got to keep your eye on that at all times that will tell you the position of your cell pointer wherever your cell pointer is that cell becomes the active cell meaning we would now type into this cell and then this area here these this is where you can accept by pressing that click and that'll just enter the data that you've typed you can click on that and it will cancel and then this one will help you insert functions which I'll show you later on the functions one now if I literally click the enter notice now the formula bar is showing me the contents of that cell notice when I go here nothing in that cell because there's nothing in the formula bar come up here and notice now you can see what's in B5 if I accidentally type over that notice this is where these buttons come in now if I click on that it would keep the type that I've kept if I type in that it'll just get rid of what I've typed and bring it back to where I want so if I add let's say some numbers in and then I accidentally touch the keyboard and you know let's say that I, I, I just put a like now that could lead to errors if I accept it so I just cancel it so these times when you do want to get rid of 
the actual type that you've typed in. So literally, name box, edit mode, and then this is the formula bar. Now this little button, you can expand and you can collapse the formula bar. Now this is good in the sense that each cell, yeah, I think you can have 32,000 characters in each cell, so these can get really big, and sometimes you just need to have a look at a big formula, so that would help you see the formula and scroll. It helps with reading the formulas when they're very long, and some of the formulas, when you get up to advanced levels, these formulas can get quite big. So that's the formula bar. Now you've got to be careful because you can turn it off. If you go to the view tab on the ribbon, come down to the show group formula bar and that can you can get rid of it. Why you would want to do that is if I was building a worksheet and then uh, I was protecting it all up, then I would hide it so nobody can play with them and things like that. But as a rule, it wouldn't be hidden. Um, it's only if it wants to be protected. So you need to keep your eye on this formula bar at all times. Then you come down to the actual work area itself. Now the work area is this area here. It's where you would input your data and input your cells. And uh, select your cells and everything else. That's what we, call, re we refer to as the work area. Then you come to your column headers. Now your column headers are the grey areas where it's got A, B, C, D, E and so on and you use these for selecting entire columns like so. Now if I want more than one column I would click and hold the mouse and then just drag over the columns that I want to select. Likewise with the row headers. Notice here I just click here and then drag down and it just selects the entire rows and however many are dragged down. This little button here in between the column header A and the row header 1, this little one, that's referred to as what we refer to as select all. Now you click that and that selects the entire sheet. Now it may seem trivial to you, trivial to you at the moment but let me tell you this. Each cell has got a cell address and each cell is independent from any other cell. And what you've got to understand, where you can see from here, row 1 down to row 18, watch this. When I go down to the bottom of the sheet, I'm down to 1,048,576 rows down. And when I go across the columns, it, it goes over to XFD which takes you to 16,384 uh, yeah, 16, columns. So if you do your maths on that, there's millions of cells. I don't know, I've never done it, but it is a lot of cells. And every single cell is completely standalone and independent. Now at this point guys I'm going to have to stop this video because I've run out of time and I'm going to have to continue it in uh, it'll be tutorial two, uh, it'll be ch tutorial 1B uh, so if you go and check me video out there and watch the other video it's just I've run out of time and I'm going to have to continue it. Thank you see you in a minute bye.